who honors all the sacred space of this earth within deity and also respects the peace and stillness within themselves and others. There are many modern and ancient definitions. The lifestyle is not one to explain, but one to adopt and one to live. And when you study Druidry, whether you're conscious of the triads or not, and it's teachings to you, there are many inner teachings and inner initiations that will blossom like seeds within you. There are many inner rituals that we will begin to share with you throughout the course of this month in our journey together. There is a journey of the initiate that is very sacred and the central secret that lies like a jewel at the heart of Druidry is this. Despite the fact that Druidry was originally an oral tradition, mouth to ear, as we would always say throughout all of the mysteries, and despite the truth that the ancient Druids have lived thousands of years, we have miraculously managed to convey an entire program of teachings across thousands of years of time that you still remember via the calling of your very soul. And the calling, if it is there, is not so quiet. You may not know what it is, for it is not comparable to any other teaching. It can be for use in your modern world, but the way that we shared it was if we placed a message in a time capsule, a bottle in an ocean, and then we let the waves carry it. And when that bottle is cast into the sea of time, the ancient Druids have sent a body of sacred teachings to you, encoded in a very ancient story that originates both from Wales and from Ireland. And at some point in time, when you listen to the stories of the lakes, hopefully you will remember their magic. So today, we'll go forth with another very, very ancient story. Oh, she wants me to type this out. Hang on a second. Let me see what I can do. <sighs> That's right. Is that right? She says yes. So I'll hit enter. Okay. So in this story um, will be a lot of teachings. She said, the story is a mythical tale of how a child becomes the greatest poet in the land. And while it can be found an entire set of teachings, it can also be the simplicity within it amongst the words that are both literal and figurative. They can be personal and the meaning can go for all of your collective of humanity. And it is a story of how we as Druids became bards. Hidden away in this strange tale is the story of a goddess who gives birth to an enlightened poet. And within this story are also, if you are listening, detailed instructions on how we can grow as Druids spiritually and how we can realize our purposeful creative potential. Each part of this mythical story will reveal to you a profound truth about the spiritual quest and the search for enlightenment, the search for creativity, and the search for inner and outer transformation. And although it is a very ancient tale, if you listen by relating to its themes in the story of your own life, it offers the ideal way for us to become the carrier of these ancient tales. And we leave a legacy for children in the future. And it is in the most deepest spiritual sense, a legacy that should be carried to the modern world, lest they forget. Although the tale depicts a rite of passage from youth to maturity, can also tell us how we can find oneness or the divine within. And as if this were not enough, it also suggests a cosmology that explains 
how the universe was created and how we ourselves can participate in our own creations and the preservation of such beautiful creation of the earth that already is. This seems a lot to expect from a short story from both Irish and Welsh literature, but it has been told in over two dozen versions. And as you awaken the druid within you, you will discover how this simple tale contains these beautiful themes and liturgy, which can be traced back to the mysteries of ancient Egypt, and perhaps to the time thousands of years ago when the Druids united a cult of the moon goddess and with that of what you may call the solar or the solar god. You have known the solar by many names. You have called this concept the Christed consciousness. You have given various names of deities to such gods, such as Jesus, Ishua, Muhammad, Horus, Toth. All of these were solar gods, including Ra. Myths such as this reflect back to us deeper spiritual truths about the human journey, and they reveal to us archetypal experiences that each of us may experience at some point in our lives. And the myth of Talisim is essentially a myth of death and rebirth. Such myths like this could chart the journey of our souls and could initiate a powerful beginning for you, one in which you may let go of all that you have believed would define you, one in which you might discover a more authentic self. You see, there is a central core that binds us. It is central to human experience and growth. And these myths are found in every culture. In the story, Talisin is male, but the experiences of descent, of death and rebirth is not confined to any gender. And if you prefer, you can sense Talisin as female, as in some of the other cultures and examples of myths of descent, which feature women, such as the abduction of Persephone to the underworld in Greek myth, or the Sumerian myth of Inanna and her underworld sister, or Aphrodite's descent to Hades to retrieve her lost lover Adonis. So we will never know when this story of Talazine was first told, but there are clues which suggests that it originated in the Bronze Age, well before the rise of classical civilizations of Rome, Greece, and it almost certainly evolved as a story which explained the relationship between deity and human, between gods and human, if you will, or even the concept of such a god. And telling the story of the creation of worlds and of people there are over two dozen early versions of the story, and no one version is correct or original. Scholars may argue that. Receive it not, except by your heart. But as well as the story of Talazine, there is also the Book of Talazine, one of the four ancient Book of Wales, um, dated perhaps around the early 13th century. And this book is a collection of 77 poems written by a real historical figure, a poet named Talisin, who lived at the end of the sixth century. And that is something to consider as well. And the poems written by that sixth century Talisin inspired Robert Graves to write The White Goddess, published in 1948. By analyzing in your heart the pathway of the Talisin, you can go deeper into yourself. But keep in mind that when you really uncover these pathways to the gods and the goddess and the secrets contained in the Talisine myth, you need to do something more than explore the material academically or analytically. You would need to enter into the story. You need to live it. Live it through your sense, your heart, as well as your minds, and then through your sacred actions in your human created life. And this is what we all do when working through initiations as druids. And some of these ancient myths were 
meant to be lived through, act us out as ritual dramas, as that's something that we would do in our time. We would visualize them in meditation and with great reverence, we would elaborate upon these tales and even go into what we call self-questioning. And we can use all of those techniques to bring the story to life, and so can you. And a story like this has thousands of years of human experience summed up in it. It is truly the equivalent of DNA at a spiritual and cultural level. And to unravel this kind of DNA, you need to work with the material of your very soul, of your own psyche, in combination with the story and it's it would be as if the story in isolation won't yield up its secrets the more it is isolated and reduced by the probing mind of the ego the more it condenses and hardens into a fossilized relic of your past but all of the ancient druids sages and rishis mystics of the old knew how to preserve living ideas across the seas of time. They knew that to preserve spiritual wisdom and the details of initiation, they had to encode the information, not in a factual document, but in a work of apparent fiction of myth. Myths have survived where written words would have been lost when belief deconstructed them. We think that oral traditions are inferior to literate ones, but it is the oral traditions that survive the longest. Look at the stories of the Aborigines, the Polynesian Islanders, the Native American tribes. They take us back to a time far beyond any written work, far beyond any collection of simple factual material. Instead of approaching this myth as a body of fact, when it is disguised in story, we approach it as if we would a dream. We are mystified by it. It is almost as if it has cast a sacred spell upon us, which we will always remember. And then the myth itself begins to breathe. It comes to life as a story that we can enter into, a story that illuminates our own lives and purpose in the world. And one way of interpreting dreams as a druid is to understand that each character in the dream has a representation of some portion of ourselves, an inner personality or a feeling, an urge denied or allowed that finds its way into the dream in personified form. Well, you can interpret myths the same way. All the characters in these ancient Druid myths can be seen as a part of ourselves. The myth then becomes a symbolic tale about how the different parts of ourselves relate to one another and about how we can affect change in our lives and the world around us. Myth has an extraordinary ability to convey concepts about our personal lives, our relationships, as well as cosmic events about beings, deities, and forces which transcend our personal lives or help us break through barriers. And in these simple narratives, they do combine teachings about the human psyche and about the spiritual and natural worlds. So the story of Talazine is about you and me, about our relationships and our sexual lives, about our mothers, our fathers, about the wounds we have received, in time in our lives, about the journey that we can take towards enlightenment and creative purpose. It is also about the relationship between the sun and the moon, about how the world was made, and about the mysteries of death and reincarnation and the gods. And it will take a little time to decipher such a combination of personal and cosmic concepts contain in the brief memorable tale of the Talisine that has survived my own ancestors who would call themselves by another name. And if we do this, when we remember we must avoid the trap of believing that our interpretation of the story is the only true and right one. 
A myth is like a territory, a country that exists in the spirit world. And we can journey through it many times and there will always be new pathways for us to discover. Mythology brings a rich ground of wonder. And the best way to avoid analytical debris from blocking us from remembering it is for us to use more than just our minds as we explore the tale. Then the story will become alive for us and we will be journeying through the territory rather than trying to chart a map. And we will be experiencing the ideas rather than simply believing that we can understand them. The analytical mind wants us to understand things completely before we step one foot forth into the sacred journey of our deepest, most sacred actions as the modern druids of our world now. The analytical mind will want to understand the entire myth once and for all, banishing forever any quality of the unknown that might exist in an image, a phrase of the story. And by its nature, it wants everything explained, everything defined, everything measured, everything evidenced. But in all the best things, escape too much definition, like fishes swimming out of our hands into a stream, or rabbits slipping from our grasp as we try to catch them. It's the reason we love people too, because we keep discovering new definitions of them, which still can never quite explain who they really are. It's the unknown in them which calls to us. So as you work with the story of serving and talisman, as you travel on your journey, don't worry about your definitions too much. And like enjoying the best of friends and lovers and nature herself, we benefit the most if we let our hearts rather than our minds lead the way. And the place where our hearts do the leading and the thinking is the dream world. When you understand the Celtic nature of Shambhala, you understand the original hollowness of everything in its journey. There are three whose full reward can never be given to them. And remember this triad. If you remember the triad, you will remember our stories. The three whose full rewards can never be given to them. Parents, a good teacher, and deity. She wants to stop and ask, give, give moment for your questions. Sarah asks, can you tell us a little more about the triads? Are we each attracted to one more than the other, for instance? She said it depends upon the fundamentals of your light body and how activated you are from the original lore of the Druids. When the light body is activated, it will be pulled. Until then, the mind will say, I am not pulled. The triads are to be lived in an eloquent discovery, and they are to be used in ritual for self-inquiry. When you understand the exercise of the ancient light body activation, and you can initiate your own light body, then it's slightly easier to be pulled by the triads, but the triads are an experience. Initially, the mind will only see them as directive, but they are experience and you can only feel, feel pulled to them by the experience itself. Just as there is the order of Bard, is there an order which specializes in storytelling, creating and telling stories? This is from Maria. That is all within the order of the Bard. That is what the nature of the Bard is. Would you like me to tell you a bardic poem. Yes, please. Mm. 
Fire upon night, the way flashing, cove within earth, the seed receiving, south into north of us, eagle upon mountain, and the light ascending, the bowl of the daily dark descending, stars beyond the shore of us, the center stays, the pattern fixes, center moves, the diagram mixes. For many and more of us, the eye shines as the east is shining. The bowl gathers darkness as the shade is spreading. The obelisk stabs down the ray. The pentagram weaves its tent, overheading the stars and the pole star turning and twining until the rotation of day. O oh, day and night, O oh, night of time, the weft upon the warp of rhyme. I backward step into the abyss where the form ends and nothing is, where nothing ends and all thing is. Ariane would like to know, how is a Druid different from a nature mystic? Druid is deeply initiated through the experience of making her life sacred. And by now, you may have had the chance to experience one of the initiating journeys through the grove, but it is a series of initiations that are guided. They may be guided from an inner journey, but they must be practiced. The grove is within, but where is your grove without? A mystic upholds the magic and the wonder that all initiates have practiced, experienced, and evidenced. A mystic in this stage of Druidic life is not only living the God self, but the sacred has become her lifestyle. A mystical druid understands this be a practice. A nature mystic simply honors, observes, and reveres the practice without adopting it into her life, literally or figuratively. A nature mystic explores things in the bardic initiations of storytelling, writings, sharing, but has not begun to yet live it. You spoke um, so much about dreams and the symbolism that occurs in our dream space. How can we remember our dreams more clearly? The dream if fought upon too deeply will easily be forgotten. The dream if allowed to wander like the wafting of the smoke from the incense will simply waft its way into our lives and it will be recollected in certain daily journeys thereafter. You must understand that the Renaissance is the dream is to be personally accounted for only through experience, experience. And when the experience of your daily life is divine, the dreams will indeed make more sense to the gentle contemplation of faith from the mind. The archaeology of, dream, archaeology of dreams are not meant to be pulled apart. All Freemasons, Druids, and mystics of my time would gather in the Celtic twilight by the influence of all that's from deity and dreams would return to be redreamt again and again. The dream is to be honored, the memory matters not. It will reveal itself in the proper holding of time, perhaps in the sacred grove ritual. Perhaps you would like to study the tree at more. Perhaps in self-inquiry you will inquire from the sacred space that you create, whether it be in your home or on lands. It must also be in your heart. 
The dream land can be rediscovered in the ritual of the sacred grove, in the light body exercises that can be given by your adept teachers for bards, and you will be a calling upon many faculties of vision and imagination to remember dreams, and they will come through your rituals, not through your knowledge, and then they will be experienced, re-experienced in your daily waking moments in your lives, and then they will be redreamt in even more fullness. When you honor the sacred space of rituals, your spiritual faculties will allow you to sense a radiant divinity within your dreams. And then it will become easier to remember because of your devotion to ritual. To become familiar with this way of the Druidic path, you will begin to establish a pattern in your life, a sacred pattern. You will enjoy going into the Bardic Sacred Grove ritual. And you will do this a number of times for the sake of doing so, for the pleasure, not to experience something that you would even view as magical, but you will do so sometimes as a means of survival even in these times. I advise you to go deeper into the Sacred Grove ritual, to let it become the central focus to go into your grove, to, to study, to read even more of the sacred material, to be inspired to create sacred actions, to live in a communal space with other Druids and earth. Do not be concerned if your personal circumstances would cause you to feel that you cannot do the work, but in the moment, simply go as best as you can into initiative experiences and at a later time, the dreams will begin to come. And if you feel strongly that you do not wish yet to perform any druidic rituals, try simply visualizing them in your mind's eye as you read the triad, as you remember the sacred stories of the bards and as you are told them. And often this can be a bit of an effective way of working, although it is always more central and better to use this by including rituals in the body as well as the mind. Nguyen once said that ritual is poetry in a world of acts. And the rituals of the Druids are simple. They will help you remember your dreams. Rituals of Druids are designed to be performed with a spirit of reverence and right intention. And when they are performed in this way, they become highly effective tools for changing consciousness, for contacting inner resources, not just for the dreaming, but for your collective dream, which benefits the purpose of all, which means you can work through what you're calling the Akash, which, which is what we call the life record. The rituals of the Druidic orders are generating healing and beneficial energies individually and for all and for Earth herself. Do not worry about getting every detail of your ritual right in the way that I would teach them to you. The main thing is that you enact the ceremony with the right spirit and intention in full awareness and consciousness. Some people feel comfortable with simplicity and minimalism and if this applies to you, feel free to make your ceremonies and rituals that of utter simplicity. Others prefer embellishment and if this applies to you, feel free to add that to your ceremony, but keep the basic structures as given and go into your ceremonies as quietly and deep within yourself as may be possible. I'm curious. What is your observation about humanity and about this collective that you're speaking with now? There are three manifestations of humanity, and this is as well a triad that you should remember. The three manifestations of humanity are affectionate bounty, loving mannerism, and praiseworthy wisdom to be loving and generous in your relationships with others and to have an intimate, innate wisdom 
of the divine, these are the signs of a great humanity. My observation of humanity at this point is that you have forgotten such greatness because you have forgotten that every moment of your breath is sacred and that you must live all components of practical life in a sacred manner. When you remember and commit to such actions, ritual will be easy. It will be performed for the simplicity of reverence, not for any gain. And all the triads will be lived, not just remembered in your mind. But you must begin somewhere and you must commit to such a beginning. But you must only do so if the calling is present. Vermu asks, do you have a favorite oil or incense that you like to use? Anything from trees. I love the scent of the pine to be taken as tea as well. I love the scent from the orange blossom to be taken as orange essential oils as well. I love the scent of frankincense and myrrh or sandalwood to remind those of not simply the element of fire, but of the element of earth. But I must say that the great oak and the scent of its sap, the scent of the ash tree, is my favorite. Would you like a poem about trees? Yes. <laughs> Tread softly as the stone, as silently as he speaks into earth. Smile as the tree gods smile into their beards. When all smile in one mirth, spreading their fronds as antennae, that only a spear eye can see. Move as the ash tree swings her branch and with the strength of oak spread out on horizontal arms, the showings of the thunder stroke. Jove elemental into giants. What are a few general ways that the Druids teach us how to illuminate, expand, and fortify the light body? As with all of the great mysteries, this is not secret, but it is sacred and must be initiated by thyself and or with a teacher but it is not to be taught to larger groves of people only because within the grove it is between thyself and God. Can you tell us more about the way of the Druid and how it's changed from ancient times to modern times? Hmm. Perhaps, but where would you wish me to start? There is much, much history. And as you work your way through that history, where would you wish to start? And the deeper question is why? But grant me some permissions to begin somewhere. I give you permission to start wherever you feel most guided. Hmm. Hmm. My first initiations were taught in Ireland and my second stages of initiations were taught to me in Wales. The third stages of Adept Apprentice Druid were taught to me in Scotland. And through each there were lessons that were given to me from the trees herself at this point in time in order to pass down such studies. We would pass down the studies in the same way that a tree would pass a ray of sunlight through its leaves. We absorb them for food. This is why it is often stated that the nature mystic is inspired and fed by the sunlight. You must remember that in all stages of initiation in Druidry, 
everything is vitalizing or degradating. Choose your food wisely. I mean this literally and figuratively. In all of my initiations from my teachers, each of the queers or lessons begins with a seed and in the form of a story, a thought, a quotation, a song given to me by my teacher, such as you all have teachers, these ideas or concepts that have been brought down through time were used as a thought or a ritual, a meditation, a prayer, and you would be given one and you would work through it as the prayer, the idea, the meditation, the song, the story, as it speaks to you personally. And sometimes I would be told as an initiate to write the idea down. Perhaps I would write it down out on a journal. Perhaps I would review it throughout the course of that study with my teacher. And even if I did not consciously read the dreams, the stories, or sing the songs aloud often, my brain would register the message of these seeds, as we call them, that were passed down to me through these stories or songs or meditations, practices. And my brain would register it in uh, many times throughout the course of um, my day in more of a subliminal way. And this would be passed down. And there would come about a time where when I honored the triads, the triads were the most important part of the lesson that could only be deeply understood through the reverence of sacred initiations. Therefore, I would speak my triads during initiations themselves. During the grove in particular as a bard, it was a degree of wonder that channeled through because the Gversi would act as a steady stream of wonder. And it was as if I was a reed and light was flowing through it. Or at times it would be as if I was an oak and strength were in my limbs. But there is a mythic nourishment that extends and enriches one's life You will understand this more deeply the more you commit to your own initiations. There is a deep historical journey of the Druids that can only be understood, not studied, because even the greatest studies are full of haughty scholars fighting over what is right. I noticed many modern day Druids seem very attached to Stonehenge. Is there anything that you can tell us about your history with that place? In the stories of the ancient ones, Stonehenge was there before it was desecrated of its power by those who have forgotten the Druids and it no longer holds any energy, and we are quite sad about such findings. We have um, sent this ovate and many bards and druids to discover this for themselves, and they were so full of their own wonder that they would reinitiate, reinvigorate the stones, and the sun would honor that druid's call. But this would take perhaps quite a mighty grove to reinvigorate it with that once more. In the old stories, they tell us that if we follow the river in Ira back to its source, we will come to a sacred pool surrounded by nine hazel trees. You should remember this story because these trees are as old as time. And they have huge trunks with that, that gnarl and curl around themselves and they are the color of russet brown and royal purple and the ripened hazelnuts will fall beneath the bright green leaves 
and drop every now and then into the lake. And this was the lake in the story that I told you of today. Go there, sit quietly by the pool at the lake, gaze into its depths, Perhaps you might be able to glimpse one of its five ancient inhabitants and the Druidic stories. Perhaps you may convene at first with the salmon swimming in its waters, leaping up from the waters now and then to catch a hazelnut as it falls. Perhaps stories will be remembered then. The history isn't as important as your attainment of love wisdom, creative fulfillment, 